future history. Finally, the truth about Hitler's diabolical plans to create a race of superwomen can be told. Werewolf Women of the SS. In a few of my videos, I've mentioned some of my thoughts on what I'm going to call faux exploitation. These are films made to mimic the aesthetic of the 70s and 80s exploitation subgenres. I think I may have given off the impression that I hate this stuff, when in reality, I don't. Kind of. I mean, I can't stand some of it, but a lot of the other stuff I really actually dig. There's been a growing fondness for 80s-style entertainment. I can't pinpoint exactly when it jumped off, but the movie Grindhouse definitely earned an eventual cult status. I'd say it's mainly to do with the fake trailers. From that, we got Hobo with a Shotgun, two Machete films, and I'm going to say that Kung Fury probably wouldn't exist without Tarantino and Rodriguez's Grindhouse. Many, many other smaller films mimicking the old-school exploitation and or just plain 80s or 70s style began to appear as well. Films in no particular order off the top of my head, such as Manborg, Father's Day, Black Dynamite, It Follows, The Guest, Your Next, Drive, Turbo Kid, and a shitload of others. We also eventually even got a semi-feature-length Kung Fury movie. It didn't stop at movies either. It actually started to get pretty big in the music department as well with 80s style synthwave. We started getting and are still getting lots of synthwave artists in a genre many have dubbed new retrowave. Some of my personal favorites include Dynatron, Mega Drive, VHS Glitch, Carpenter Brute, and of course, Perturbator. Now, I personally think the music has been more hit than miss, whereas the movies have really varied in quality. Now, remember, this is all opinion. It's subjective. If you enjoyed it, you still enjoyed it. This is just my opinion. I personally don't like the faux exploitation films that almost entirely exist for the sake of lampooning schlock subgenres. It's one thing to crack a joke here and there, include a boom mic and a shot or two, you know, be self-aware and shit. That's fine. A lot of exploitation films are very self-aware and were made for the fun of it to begin with. Red Brown always knew what he was getting himself into, especially when working with Bruno Matai. It's when the whole film is pretty much spent laughing at Z to B grade movies. Then it gets fucking frustrating to me. There's nothing I hate more than forced bad performances. Pretending to act badly is honestly worse to me than someone actually trying to act well and ended up being unintentionally hilariously bad. Manborg is a fucking prime example of this. I couldn't stand this movie. For one, everybody in it looked like a bunch of coffee shop hipsters. My name is Manborg. My name is Manborg. Fuck you, dude. My guess is that a big chunk of this movie was inspired by Charles Band's The Eliminators, in particular, The Mandroid. Similar name, and they kinda look alike. Big difference is, Mandroid was fucking badass, and the dude playing him actually gave a shit. Whereas Doucheborg over here looks like he'd be the kind of guy to tell you that Die Hard is overrated, and that he only watched Daria because Beavis and Butthead was too conformist. My name is Manborg. The whole movie is just mean-spirited, too. Almost every line of dialogue is done in an effort to convince you that 80s B to Z grade movies were fucking stupid. Especially the ending. Father's Day followed this same line, and it was made by the same people who made Manborg. I really wanted to like Father's Day because I thought at least aesthetically it looked nice. It actually captured that 80s sleaze vibe a lot better than they did with Manborg, but dialogue and character-wise, it was the same old shit. Ironic hipster douchebags playing dress-up. Fuck em. <laughs> I was gonna mention Samurai Cop 2, but I think that just summed it up better than I ever could. And speaking of cops that do martial arts, I guess I should mention Kung Fury. I liked Kung Fury. I feel like it was a perfect length and honestly quite endearing. It was cute, it was funny. I also love the fucking soundtrack. Not really much else to say other than that. It was harmless fun and had a perfect balance of taking itself seriously and being self-aware. The dude playing Kung Fury also looks like he could have been a lead in a real 80s movie. Sort of reminds me of Samurai Cop a little bit. I think that's really the bottom line here. I mean, even though it's meant to be funny or lampoonish, 
are the actors at least convincing to some degree? Can you buy this guy as an action hero even if he sucks as an actor? Let's use Robin Hood Men in Tights and Dracula Dead and Loving It as examples. In my opinion, Robin Hood Men in Tights is actually a fantastic Robin Hood movie on its own merits. Carrie Ells actually made a convincing Robin Hood, almost too convincing. Whereas Dracula Dead and Loving It was a bit too on the nose. Don't get me wrong, I fucking love Leslie Nielsen, but you never really see him as Dracula. It's more like Frank Drebin in a Halloween costume or something. It becomes too lampoony. With someone in the role that actually could have come across like a legit Dracula, I think the movie could have been a lot funnier. Maybe even switch Leslie Nielsen into the Van Helsing character, because then the Frank Drebin vibe would work. All that being said, let's go ahead and praise the ever-loving fuck out of Black Dynamite. Because Black Dynamite is perfect. It's roaringly funny, the satire is on point, and the character is enough of a badass that it doesn't feel too lampoony or mean-spirited. Michael Jai White is a fantastic actor, a genuine badass, and clearly loves the black exploitation genre. The movie looks on point, feels on point, and everything that's meant to be funny fucking is. That's how you fucking do that shit. Drive. Another solid example. Nick Reffin has a clear vision for all of his films, and for this one, he clearly just wanted to make an 80s crime movie. Not a satire, not an 80s style movie, but an 80s movie. You can feel it in the pacing, the color palette, the subtle synth score. Nothing feels ridiculously over the top, but it has enough of that 80s charm. Ryan Gosling plays the character a lot like an 80s Stallone. The driver has some shades of Marion Cobretti, at least to me he does. Plus, that jacket was just cool as all fuck. Instantly iconic. When I watch Drive, it almost feels like an 80s era Michael Mann film, a lot like Manhunter or Thief. But not so much that it's a blatant ripoff, just enough that it's a respectful nod and definitely enough to be its own excellent standout film. These are pretty much my favorite kind of movies when it comes to this whole resurgence of the 70s and 80s. When the filmmaker just decides to make a movie of the era. There's no irony, there's no satire, it's just, I want to make a fucking 80s movie, deal with it. Ty West's House of the Devil, much like Drive, is another perfect example. Adam Weingard's You're Next and The Guest are absolutely fucking brilliant. Of course, S. Craig Zoller's Bone Tomahawk and Brawl in Cell Block 99, insanely fucking good. And if you want a Charles Band style film done right, you go with Francois Simard's Turbo Kid. This movie kicks fucking ass. It's heartfelt, it's action-packed, it's fun, and it's funny. It genuinely feels like something from the Empire Pictures catalog, and also has some shades of Enzo G. Castellari's Mad Max knockoff films, like Bronx Warriors and Warriors of the Wasteland. I'm gonna leave you with this. It's easy to be mean-spirited, because then you just have the excuse that it was always meant to be shitty, but if you try, that takes real guts. Take from that what you will. Monetary support? Patreon and merch. Links in the description. More quality entertainment? Catch me on Radio Drum with Josh Hadley and Cecil from Good Bad Flicks on 1201beyond.com. And be sure to check out some of the other shows. Support badass synthwave artists like Perturbator on bloodmusic.com. You have everything to lose. I have everything to gain. Yeah.